everybody check as Grizz what's up man I was just thinking about you Gr- hey, Grizz let me know if you want to come up Grizz to uh promote whatever you got I mean your people is always my people so um I got, I'll put it in the uh the whatever the hell we call it if you ever want to come up so all you gotta do is just let me know uh, good morning, everybody. I don't know if y'all went back and caught yesterday's show. It was, I thought it was, both shows were pretty good. Um, all right, David. Would you send it to me on um, Instagram? But, yeah, I'll take a look at it. But I, I did two morning shows yesterday because one of the streams got shut down because I was, I was doing too much. But, you know, we started, we started the second one, and I think the second one was, uh, I'm mad at myself because the second freaking stream should have been should have been um a whole separate one. Like it should have been another day. Uh but yo GP, what's up? But uh let me bring up my co-host. I don't want to keep him waiting. Hello, my sir. What's up? GP, what's up? Yeah, so I'm mad at myself because the second stream, I should have just waited for a baby today and do it. It was ended up being a really good stream. So I don't know if y'all caught back, went back and caught part two of yesterday's stream. Um, go do me a favor, go watch it, and give it a like or a comment. I don't even think Mel, I don't even think you saw it yet, right? Yeah, it's all part of it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Go back and um, why it was hilarious, man. About the the girl, it's not the stream is hilarious, but the, the story is sad. A dude killed himself because his wife was um. Okay, all right, Grace, because his, his child's mother was uh harassing him for a year and I read the article is is unbelievable so do me a favor go back and uh, watch it now that a YouTube lowered his threshold I don't care about the watch hours I don't even care about getting monetized but whatever uh oh Mayo your girl got felt guilty sir you know that oh damn okay that I don't know if y'all know we talking about the sleepy death father's uh, trial. Yeah, she got found a little guilty, sir. They just, they just did not like her. Sir, did you see the way she... Well, it didn't help that you called her fat. It didn't help that. I called her that? No, do we want to play the tape back, sir? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Well, I, I don't think I was on the jury, sir. I mean, I think everybody was pretty much calling her crazy and fat. So, but so I'm gonna go over a little bit with that trial because I don't think people know how uh, how crazy that trial actually was, man, and what she did. Because everybody was too busy worrying about YMWWSC, whatever the hell his name is. But uh, yeah, here you go. I mean, if you could please stand and read the verdict to the courtroom. Why does she keep holding on to that damn blanket? Like, that's another reason why she got found guilty. She looked crazy. Mm-hmm. 
guilty of chemical irritants, unlawful call, unlawful use causing death. Thank you. Judge the jury pulled? Yes, Your Honor. Juror in seat number two, is that Mosette your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number three, is that Mosette your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number four, is that Mosette mm, your mm, verdict? Mm. Yes. Juror in seat number five, is that Mosette? I wonder if a, uh, a jury ever was polled and somebody changed their verdict. That's a good question. Uh, I'm pretty sure they had to. That's the reason why they ever. That's why they pulled the jury. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they pulled the jury. But I don't think she's gonna do a lot of time. Well, she might. She might. Let me see what David said. She might, but yeah, you would. You thought she was gonna get found uh, not guilty. I just think that they had re they had more than enough reasonable doubt. Uh, I'm with you. You know, because, I mean, even the father said that it didn't happen during their argument. Mm -hmm. David, which one are you talking about that you sent me? Which one you want me to look at? Because you sent me a bunch of shit. Oh, the, the Michigan mom accused of cyber stalking daughter. All right. I'll look at that after we uh, I get in the, started with the show. But go ahead, Mayor. What was you saying? I just I I think they they had plenty of reasonable doubt because even the father said that it didn't happen during the argument. Yeah, I, you know what I think killed her was uh, when no pun intended was her the 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 way she, they would basically make her look heartless, like she didn't care. And I think the jury the jury take that's personal, man. Because I'm telling you, the jury see their self in a lot of these people. And I know they're not supposed to. They're supposed to go off the law. But people rarely do. People rarely do. They go off yeah. emotion. And, and and as nonchalant about it as she was at first, in yeah. the beginning of the trial, you didn't yeah. see tears until like day two. Yeah. And it was like, it would seem like she was more irritated than anything to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Like the YMW Melly case, he just looked, he just, honestly, he looked slow. So. Yeah, um, he, he don't look right, man. He yeah, don't look so they, they might feel sorry uh, for her, for him, just because he looked like he a little slow child. That's what I'm saying. They always go off for emotions, even if he's a stone cold killer. So you just got to be careful with that kind of stuff, man. And with her, she just didn't look right. She looked like. She looked like she was one of them crazy badass teenagers that didn't listen. And the parents probably was like, I got a teenage I got a teenage daughter that never listened. I want her ass. I always wanted to do this to lock her ass away for 25 years. <laughs> so give it to her. You get what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah. Kids, oh, yeah. You know what I mean, I got a teenage daughter that got on my nerves. I'm about to lock this hoe up. Like I see her and her. So I'm telling you right now. That, no, David, I won't show everybody a picture by the truck. I won't dox your dumb ass, even though I should. Look at Mel. Mel back from being being a little alcoholic. I had to text to make sure she was living. Uh, yeah, I, I ain't heard from her in a little while. Yeah, her and her old man trying to make another baby. Her and her uh -oh. old man make, trying to make another baby. But, yeah, she got found guilty, man. So, I don't know. They didn't sentence her yet. But uh, I hope I hope that birthday She's going up the it. river for as long as they don't like her. No, no. Is well, it the jury that decides the the sentence there, or the judge? The judge. Oh, okay. Yeah, the judge. But she, um, it, it seemed like the judge probably didn't care for her either, because nobody like her. Let's be honest. Oh she no, just, no, she, just she, got she that, was yeah. entirely unlikable. Yeah, nobody, nobody liked her, man. I feel bad for. Her. I don't feel oh. bad for her, but I feel bad for her because she just got that. But you can, yo, know, she's a bitch. I don't, I don't know. That's the way to say it. Your dad, even if you didn't do it, and it was an accident, and your best friend tell you your dad is in a hospital because of acid burns, and you say, "Did you get the card?" Like, I just, like nobody's, nobody's going to oh, feel and, sorry for and you. And you don't go to the hospital. Yeah, you go to your your little party. Yeah, nobody gonna feel bad for you. No. And like you say, she just she's she's one of the rare unlikable that no, nobody like her. Yeah, it's like it is. But I can't really blame it a lot on her because she seemed like she had a rough upbringing. Man, her dad was an alcoholic. 
They said the house was disgusting. But she was living in it too. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. She probably was brought. She probably was brought in that hillbilly culture or something. Who knows? You know. I mean, the state trooper said it was the worst smell he ever smelt in his life. It was the house was disgusting. But the dad had credit cards. So I don't know. Go figure. I didn't know poor people had credit cards. <laughs> I really didn't. When I was young and poor, I couldn't get a credit card. But whatever. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show you that, man, and let you know your home. You're going up the road. If you want to put some money on her books or, um, you know, send her a love letter once in a while, let her know when she get turned, when she turns 25, you'll be waiting for her. She got to lose. She's going to lose a lot of weight in jail. Oh, no, I think she's going to blow up. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Think she can become a lesbian? Oh, yeah. I think she's going to become whatever she needs to to survive. I mean, if if she would have washed her hair, it would have helped. I guess. I mean, she looked like she just rolled out of bed through that flower sack of a dress on and was just bothered by the whole thing. Mm. So, I'm letting everybody know. Like I said, I'm starting the the Black Widow series and it's all about I'm showing appreciation to women who basically kick in uh, their husbands or their boyfriend asses. And sending them to the grave or whatever. But uh, I'm starting off with... Um, I started off with the two chicks yesterday, which I shouldn't have. I, I should have broke it down, but I didn't know I was going to do this. So give me uh, give me a little leeway on that one. But if y'all know any stories of people who uh, want to... Uh, of women who are uh, whipping guys' asses or deleting them, let me know. I will be. I will do it. But I want to go back to Lisa, Lisa Nowak. I didn't know anything about this. I don't know if I was living under a rock. And it happened in 2007. And I was an adult. I was a, I was a one year, I was a rookie. So I, I don't know how I missed this. But what do you think she's up to now, Maya? What do you think this chick Lisa Nowak is up to now? A lot of psychological counseling. That's it. You think she's still in jail? She's she's out. I don't know. How much jail did she get? Well, she got out in 2017. Oh, she got out in 2017? Mm-hmm. Yeah, her. I mean, she's not going to get anything off of her fame. Uh, what if I tell you she's working in a private sector and has a big house and is doing... Well, I wouldn't movies. doubt that because she probably had all that before. Yeah, I, her husband was was an engineer. He had money too. So to give y'all a little backstory, of this chick, the fact that she do this make you not want to get married. Like you've been married to a woman for nineteen years, and this is why I'm always weary when when a girl tells me she got a a, a, a brother that she don't that does not blood related, or she got a friend that's a, a best friend that's a male. Yeah, I'm always no, that, worried about that. Yeah, and oh, I'm working close with him. Nah, man, and and women, y'all need to be wary too. If your if your husbands or boyfriends talking about oh they gotta they doing these late lunches with the uh, coworker that's a female. Yeah, y'all need to uh, y'all need to be a little wary with that. Listen, I don't know. I got three people in here, but at least all three of y'all hit the like button so I can at least get in the algorithm so YouTube can tell people about me. So, Show an eleven for me. Yeah, I was bullshit. I was being an asshole. Oh, okay. You know, man. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> in February two thousand and seven, <clears throat> U.S. astronaut Lisa Nowak drove from. The... How you know, how crazy had this chick had? To... They say it's a thin line between sanity, a genius, and crazy. It, it's a very thin line because every genius, not every, but a lot of geniuses that you know are cat shit crazy. Uh, look at Tesla. He was a nut job. 
look at Elon. Can't get much more weirder than that, can you? I no, mean, not much. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. He. Johnny Depp start believing he those damn characters. Bill Clinton. <laughs> I, I think people with a lot of fame, or a lot of uh. a lot of accomplishments think they're owed something and they take special uh treatment i just think no uh and then they expect things from everybody and when they don't get them it drives them crazy okay einstein was crazy as hell what do you think he expected something or he was just mostly trying to give? Cause that's the kind of crazy I'm talking about. People who just can't help it. Like Tesla, Nikola Tesla was a, I mean, he was a super genius, man. He was smart as hell. I read about him. I don't know how many times. And, uh, if you ever want to evil crazy, no, no. If you ever want to watch a good, a good documentary, uh, the men who built America it was a great series. You ever see that? No, no. If you, uh, the History Channel did it years ago. I want to say it's six, seven years ago. Uh, they it's it's a bunch of parts. It's probably like ten parts about the greatest men. Um, Rock, yeah, Rockefeller, uh, uh, Edison, Einstein, all those guys. Tesla. It's called the Men Who Built America. When I tell you, it is a great series, man. It's a great series, man. So, just a disclaimer: if you ever want to go. If you want to do a binge, and each episode is like a couple hours long, and they break it down, so it is they really did a great job, man. They spent a lot of money making it, and I think they got the uh, good return for it. But so this chick was an astronaut. She knew from she knew from childhood. At least that's what they say. She wanted to be an astronaut, and she did it. So that got to be that guy. That got to give her something, right? Usually, you don't unless they were lying. But if you usually people say they want to be something and then when they get older, they, they end up becoming a fucking trash, trash man or a damn prostitute or something. People don't never live out their dreams. But she told uh, she told a story that when she was like four or five, she saw the Apollo missions and she wanted to be an astronaut and she ended up becoming one. So she yeah. she definitely wasn't a dumb girl, man. Yeah, D Day, the diapers, the diapers on this bro. So she definitely wasn't a dumb girl. But it's just like I say it's a thin line between uh, between a genius and crazy. And I don't I don't think it takes much for these people to snap, especially with her. But the audacity is you've been you with a husband for 19 years and you decide to have a little fling on the side. That's the that's the part I can't get over with. 19 years, and she still Got custody of the goddamn kids. Are you serious? Well, they all older, but yeah, the kids still. still. Live with her. Yeah, you'll see. I did. I did. Um, Jeez. I researched her more. This is how crazy this world is. Uh, if I was her child, and my she tried to tell me what to do, tell me like if I was acting up, she was trying to tell me what to do. I was like, at least I didn't drive nine hundred miles with a diaper on to go to go kidnap somebody like you. Y'all be an asshole. Uh, U.S. astronaut Lisa Nowak drove from Houston, Texas. You can't tell your child what to do. You can't tell your child to be bad anymore. If you drove from Houston, from whatever you had to Houston, 900 miles with a diaper on to go and kidnap somebody, you can never tell your child what to do again. Your credibility is shot. Only thing you can do is threaten them with physical bodily harm because they know you will do it. Uh, to confront the woman who won the affections of an astronaut that Nowak had been involved with. He must have been slinging that dick all around NASA. Instead of having the conversation she claimed she wanted, Nowak was arrested for attacking the other woman. A story about the space program and in and out of, <laughs> an out of control love triangle would naturally capture attention. But the reported detail that Nowak wore diapers on her 900 mile drive in order to avoid the bathroom breaks transformed the incident into irresistible fodder for tabloids and late night talk shows alike. People thought it was funny. Um, though no ex-attorney well, would you later know the, She got the idea from the astronaut program. 
Well, the attorney saying she didn't do it. Lewis attorney would later insist his client never put on diapers. No whack was an inspiration to the type. Come on, man. They make him feel. Well, they they don't. Home. They're not called adult diapers. They're they're called incontinence products or something. So he didn't lie. Which story? No, Natalie he Portman. he lied by omission. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Natalie Portman as an astronaut named Lucy Cola. Natalie Portman. She a little cute thing. Yeah. South Park did an episode on her. They they trashed the shit out of her. I know she hate them. No oh, she's still hot. Yeah, she is. Nowak was able to balance a, a successful career and family and get dick on the side. Nowak first became interested in space when she was five years old. I remember, if this is a hit piece, they they make her look real good, don't they? Yeah. They don't never drag women like they should. You notice that? Oh, hell no. No, because it's, uh, you know, it's all about living their best life and, you know, the sexual revolution and all that. Yeah, they don't never drag these hoes the way they should drag them. They need me up there. They need me up there to drag, <laughs> to write these articles. I'm going to give everybody, I'm going to give everybody, uh, everybody going to catch this smoke. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. Uh, I remember the moon landing and watching those astronauts, and I thought that was very exciting, she said in 2005 interview. She studied aerospace engineering at the United States Naval Academy and went on to receive a master's degree in aeronautical engineering in 1996. Nowak made it through the competitive selection process to become the astronaut. She traveled to space and a mission specialist on the shuttle Discovery in July 2006. Being an astronaut is a demanding profession, but her job didn't keep Nowak from starting a family. She married Richard. He's a simp. A classmate from the Naval Academy. They had three children, a son and two twin, and a tw oh, twin girls too, huh? Nowak took pride in both having a family and staying on course in the space program, saying in one interview, it's definitely a challenge to do. The flying and take care of even one child and all, and do all the other things you have to do, but I learned you can do it. And she had a side dude. Don't forget that, folks. So she had time. She had time. She had a side dude, too. She had three kids, a husband, and a side dude in a full career. And she made it work. And she went to space. And she went to space. And you <laughs> women telling me y'all can't even cook and clean? Y'all ain't got enough time? You a goddamn liar. In 2004, I'm going I'm to pay for that one. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, in 2004, Nowak began an affair with a fellow astronaut. He's just a... Whatever happened to this guy? You think he's still slinging his dick? Oh, yeah. Yet behind the facade problems existed in Nowak's personal life. In 2004, before she made it into space, she began an affair with a fellow astronaut, William Ophelin. Ophelin? Ophelin trained with Nowak, but the two did not go into space at the same time. In 2005, they're just trying to assure people they didn't have sex in space. I know they did. I know they did. In 2005, Ophelia divorced his wife after 19 years of marriage. Nowak and her husband separated in early 2007. You think? What do you think caused their separation in 2007? Uh, probably the affair. Uh, you think her driving with some diapers on to go kidnap her, uh, another man? Uh, uh, that would do son. it. You think that would do it? That would do it. Yeah, at the time, she seems to have an envision of future with Ophelia. Yeah, okay. However, in mid-January 2007, Ophelia let Nowak know and she was in an exclusive relationship. He was in an exclusive relationship with Air Force Captain Colleen Shipman. Ophelia later told investigators he thought Nowak was disappointed but accepting of the news. No, sir, women don't like being broken up with. But Nowak ended up using a key why did this fool take his key back, folks? Never take the key back. Always change the locks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because if All you right. say you want your key back, that gives them time to make a copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or they, or they lie and say they lost it. And yeah. Ain't nothing you could do. But you're right about that. He's a fool. But listen to this part. But Nowak ended up using the key... Ophelin had given her to enter his apartment where she accessed personal emails between Ophelin and Shipman. 2007, did they have uh, they had like locks on the computer and shit, passwords? Or no? Oh yeah, 
but he obviously didn't have one. Mm, and one shipment wrote, we'll have, to, uh, we'll have to control myself when I see you. First urge will be to rip your clothes off, throw you on the ground, and love the hell out of you. Damn, she's just a freak. Uh. And you, you know, you know, she didn't use uh, the word love. Mm 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 mm. <laughs> no, nah, she's just nasty. Noak then proceeded to with the trip that would result in the headline dubbing her an Astro Nut. She got mad <laughs> as hell. Mm mm mm. Noak approached Shipment in the airport parking lot. Having learned the details of Shipment return flight from Houston to Orlando, thanks to her time in Oflin's apartment, Noak made the same 900-mile journey by car and ended up in Orlando National Airport. She then kept watch as Shipman, who'd been visiting Oflin, got in around 1 a.m. on Friday. So she was living in she was living in Houston and uh Oflin was living in Orlando. I'm confused. Oh yeah, that's that's the two uh Well she probably it was probably uh Orlando Airport, which would be the closest to uh to the space coast down in Florida. So she was having an affair with the dude, but he lived nine hundred miles away. Yeah. Uh, Shipman spent a couple hours waiting for delayed luggage before taking a shuttle bus to uh, parking. Nowak wearing a, a wig and a trench coat. Let me see what the hell it is. No, they ain't got it up. Oh, you cocksuckers. <laughs> Roll with her. Shipman spotted Nowak, whose attire made her look out of place, and hurried to her car. Noak then approached Shipman. This is where we stopped there yesterday. Claimed her boyfriend hadn't shown up and asked for a ride. Not letting Noak into the car, Shipman offered to call for help. Now, this is the part I don't get. She was running in every goddamn thing, and this bro running behind her, and she felt bad for her. When Shipman slightly opened the car window, Noak allegedly pepper sprayed her. Oh. Fortunately, Shipman was able to drive away, and the police apprehended Noak. The investigators found hundreds of dollars in cash, print out some personal e-wells between Oflin and Shipman, pepper spray, a knife, rubber tubing. What is the rubber tubing for, Mayo? I don't get what the, what what is she doing with rubber tubing, sir? Yo, gag, like what you gonna put bleach down her throat or something? What, what's what's going on with that? It's just weird. Uh, gloves, a BB gun. Okay, a mallet and a computer disc that held images of bondage scenes and new works below. No wax, no wax belongings. Oh, she was going, she was going to torture this hoe. What time say Kennedy Space Center? Yeah. Okay. I got to read that part again. Fortunately, Shipman was able to drive away, and the police apprehended Nowak. Investigators found hundreds of dollars in cash, printouts of personal emails between Oflin and Shipman, pepper spray, a knife, rubber tubing, gloves, a BB gun, a mallet, and a computer disc to hell. Images of bonded scenes and Nowak's belongings. Holy crap. This, this chick got some crazy coochie right there. Woo! That's what you call a crazy chick. Oh my goodness. Jesus, take the wheel. Our car reportedly also contained diapers. However, these apparently weren't special NASA, NASA diapers. No ex attorney would later claim they were toddler diapers in her car due to her family's uh, evacuation during the 2005 hurricane season. Sir, that makes zero sense. This happened in 2007. The family got there in 2005. She got diapers in her car two years later. All right. I hear you, sir. As the police had no wax identification, they told Shipman her name sounded familiar. She and Oflin had discussed his ex, and Oflin had once mistakenly called her Lisa, Lisa in bed. He lucky he's still living. This dude tripping. Yeah. So Shipman phoned her boyfriend to confirm the connection. Meanwhile, she she was in police custody. No wax remained focused on talking to Shipman. Many speculated that no ex time and NASA affected her state. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Really? 
<laughs> there's no def definitive explanation for no ex choices. However, some of those so I speculated that Columbia shuttle disaster may have played a part in her breakdown. Yeah, right. Like, why? This why she just can't be crazy, period. On February 1st, 2003, the returning shuttle Columbia was completely destroyed after a piece of foam broke off, hit the same ship's wing. Seven astronauts on board lost it. Yo, a lot of people died on these damn spaceships, dog. Oh, yeah. They're always taking people out. Seven astronauts on board lost their lives, including no ex close friend Laura Clark. It's easier to understand how Lance and Mike have missed changes in no ex emotional state. Being propelled into space by a high powered rocket is not a low key endeavor, but she, no, you can't say that because she, she signed up for it. So potential astronauts face rigorous training, yet many uh, psychological tests no ex had undergone to join the program have been back. In 1996, with no regular follow-ups. All right, bitch. In addition, no ex would have known that seeking aid for any problems would likely mean she'd lose her place in the program. No, but she had time to go get that dick. After waiting for years to go to space, she would not have wanted to jeopardize her chances and therefore would have every incentive to hide personal turn on. No, but that makes no sense. Because if she was if she knew, if she wanted to go to space and hit her issues. Then she made a personal fucking choice. That hoe got to go to jail. Well, she already did go to jail, but y'all know what I mean. It's also possible that returning from her 2006 space flight affected no ex state of mind. She knew the mission was likely to be her only one. Good. At that time, there were many other astronauts waiting in the wings. No, like, I'm not going to lie to you. If I see astronauts dying on these flights every time they go, I would not be signing up for this shit. Uh, Noek may have trouble readjusting after this never to be repeated journey. So, astronauts don't go to space more than once, Mayo? Like, usually not. Okay. Portman's character says, I just feel like and feel a little go off. You go up there, you see the whole universe, and everything here looks so small. Uncle Tom, she says she saw the universe, sir. You, you think she's lying? Because you, you claim the world is. Uh, the world is flat. No I wonder if she saw the ice wall and it drove mm -hmm. her crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she saw Uncle Tom skating on it too. <laughs> ice skating on the wall. Uh, no way plague instant insanity and her criminal case is now sealed. Wow. Wow. They let her get away with that. Damn. Man. Nowak was charged with attempted kidnapping and burglary assault, making her the first active duty astronaut to face felony charges. How they let her, like, that's crazy. Uh, NASA let Nowak go a month after she confronted Shipman. Oflin was released by the agency in June of 2000. He lost his job, too. And he didn't even do nothing. NASA uh, sir, you're not supposed to be screwing at work. Sir, he wasn't screwing at work. Sir, he was screwing after work. Get it right. You're not supposed to be screwing your co-workers. Especially in a government job. Sir, he didn't know that they was that they was working He was married, time. sir. <clears throat> and so was she. He didn't Come like on. his wife. She didn't never she never made dinner. She didn't clean. He got tired of the shit. So he needed to release some steam. What you want him to do? <laughs> NASA ended up instituting annual psychological screenings for astronauts. As, I can't believe they fired her, him, man. Mm, I bet you he ain't got a job. We got to look him up to see what he's doing now. I guarantee you he, he probably homeless, dead, broke. The girl shipment left him. Oh, man, no. Gonna... He's he's drunk every day at the golf club in, in, in Florida somewhere. Bragging on his astronaut shit, trying to pick up chicks at the bar. Yeah, but you think he got money? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Somebody look him up. See where he where, uh, what he doing. What's he's he's a former Air Force pilot, man. He ain't gonna go. He ain't gonna go hungry. Look up Ophelin, y'all. See what Ophelin doing for a living. Hey, here we go. He gonna come up with his nonsense. You got caught in your lies, sir. She said. Uh, she said that. Uh, she was in space. Look. Uh, what the Ophelin say he doing? That's what I'm looking for. I think he's homeless now, going through it. 
First off, you believe this crazy bitch. You believe mm-hmm. this crazy bitch? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So then you then you you were just like the rest of them, giving showing no accountability for this crazy heifer. It's all right. I don't put it past you. That's what that's what, that's what, that's what degenerate blacks do all the time. What you mean? I don't no accountability for her. She says she went to space. What I gotta give her yeah, accountability okay. for? You believe it though, right? Yes, sir. Because she has other okay. people with her. No, oh, who are those other people? I don't know their names. I wasn't there. Ah, okay. So you don't know their names, but you know she went up there with someone. Well, the problem is, you know, they're not going to space mm. by herself. Is there any solo missions to space? No, no, there's not, not one. Okay, okay. All right. So, but you believe this crazy bitch? Yes, sir. Mm, okay. All right. Okay. We try to find out whatever happened to that that guy that they uh they fired for no reason. Male capping for the woman. So uh, just like you. No, I don't cap for the woman. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Uh, as her case moved to trial, no legal legal counsel filed the paperwork for the insanity plea. Claiming she <laughs> suffered from suffer, she, claiming she suffered from a, a obsessive compulsive disorder, insomnia, and depression. Everybody in the military got that shit. Was, uh, so she believed that she went to space, but there's no proof. Well, it's okay. Where you get that from, sir? Hey, she's she's copping insanity, so she obviously has delusions. So her credibility is set. Then a motherfucker shot. Then a motherfucker. Okay. Then came a ruling that Nowak had been fully advised of her rights, and therefore her police interview was inadmissible in court. Wow. Then came a ruling that Nowak had not been fully advised of her rights. And therefore, her police interview was inadmissible in court. God, door, how they fucked that up? In the end, Nowak entered into an agreement that saw her plead guilty to the burglary and misdemeanor battery. The judge, taking her status as a first-time offender in the account, gave her a year of probation, community service, and directed her to write shipment a letter of... What? Where fame... Uh... Wow. This is where fame comes in your favor. That is crazy. Shipman was not happy with the sentence. She told the court no one had intended to kill her. Yes, yeah. And and it was in her eyes a blood chilling expression of limitless rage and glee. That she was a little dramatic with the glee. The crime had left Shipman with nightmares, dizzy spells. She also felt that she needed weapons to protect herself. However, Nowak's actions didn't derail Shipman's relationship with Oflin. The two both retired from the military in 2008, relocated to Alaska. That is getting away. That is moving away. Married in 2010 and now share a son. Shipman also began a writing career which helped her cope with the attacks after effects. Yo, hi, yo I would have been petty and, signed and, and sent uh, Nowak a signed copy of my book. Got your man. That's what you get for kidnapping, you bitch. Nowak and her husband divorced in 2008. What do you think her husband said about this stuff, y'all? God damn, that thunderstorm was crazy. <laughs> what do you think her husband said? Y'all hear that lightning? That thunder? There's a bad storm here. Uh, Chet Cash David wanted to know if uh, balls float or sink in space. <laughs> First of all, that's not Wednesday, bitch. We're not doing that nonsense. What y'all think her husband? What do y'all? What do y'all stop derailing my topic? What do y'all think her husband, Noak's husband, thought about all this when he found out his wife was cheating on him with a a a dude in space? And not to mention, she got the kids and everything. Uh, she would. He's probably wondering how how deep did the dude's balls go inside her while they're in space. I'm about to drop you down. Uh, 2011, she was given other, other than honorable discharge from the Navy. They didn't even give her a dishonorable. Wait, which she immediately converted to an honorable. That's crazy. They didn't even give her a dishonorable. That was some nope. slick shit. Nope. This, yo, that's crazy. 
Yo, yo, what's up? Discharged from the Navy and was demoted from captain to com commander when she left the service. She succeeded in having her criminal case sealed in 2011, though memories will, mm. will, will still... Yo, dog. Like, how? How? It's, she was just privilege, bro. man. Yeah, yeah it's, all it's privilege. She was just... We have NASA doesn't want the embarrassment. Mm, That's you know? a fact. That's a fact. So, what did, like I asked Mayo earlier, what do y'all think this whole up to now? She's, oh, she's uh, working for some defense contractor. That's a fact. So, this is uh, this. I is think she's movie. writing books. Ah, uh, yeah, she's the author. She got a nice big house. She made out good. She mm -hmm. made out real good. She ain't gotta uh she ain't gotta worry about a damn thing. Astronaut, this damn storm is no fucking joke. This shit is crazy. It's loud as hell. <laughs> Yo, you oh, now, float. <laughs> and today she's a big me too hero. I'm sure. Uh I bet this whole better not be. Cause she need to be the one. She she need to be the one. She the one did the me too. And in this case, oh, I she, understand, but yeah, you know how, she, not how it works. Yeah, she did the me too. And in this case, they need to if they let her get away with me too. <laughs> like she the one need to be in jail for me too. So this is what she's up to now, which is which is outstanding. And I wonder if she got a new man. She probably got a new man too. And he probably don't have any clue who she is. Probably don't have any fucking clue who this dumbass chick is. Oh, dude, I'm sure he Googled her. You think so? Oh, hey, would you bone her? Uh, now? Or before? Both. Uh, Before, yes, I would have gave her all the dick. Oh, son of a bitch. Now I would have... Uh... No, now, now I wouldn't. Now I wouldn't. But what makes you change your mind now? Cause she drove a hundred, she drove nine hundred miles with a diaper on to kill somebody, sir. That ain't something that you want to, that you, that you want to chance. What about you, Mayo? About she you, was Mayo? gonna kill him. She was gonna kill him with a BB gun. Come on now. She no, sir. Dead. She had she had rubber hoses. I don't know what, a, what I don't know what she was planning on doing with a rubber hose. She was gonna beat him with a rubber hose. That's it. Him, uh, no, her. Yeah, she had a rubber hose. Yeah. And she was going to beat the kid with it. So, what you, so you stood, so you would take a chance on her? She got money. You know, she ain't broke. She probably got millions of dollars. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I wouldn't be able to trust her. That's for damn sure. Well, what, cheating or, or killing you? Uh, both, sir. Yeah, you, you could tell she Lisa Nowak lives in a modest four bedroom home outside of Houston, living in a living a quiet life and working in a private sector. Now fifty nine. No, she's too old for me. Her children are fully grown. Her oldest son is thirty. Her twin daughters are now twenty one. Oh, you know them? How you crazy? You think the daughters? Uh oh, uh oh, I see you. What? Oh, they they batshit crazy. What twenty? I don't like younger women, sir. Never had. Uh, Why not? I don't, I don't know. They grown. I just don't like younger girls. Man. They've been grown for three years. I don't like younger girls. They're, they're great years. until they talk. Mm -hmm. And they mom, and and if they got their mom jeans, you know they 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 bad shit crazy. It's you can't funny. you can't place the burden on them to, because their mother's actions. Come on now, sir. Have you ever seen a crazy girl? Like met a crazy girl before in your life, yeah. And you met her mom, and then you find out why she's crazy because her mom is bad shit crazy. Actually, I usually like the mothers more than the daughters. I bet you do. I bet you do. I'm not talking about your fetish here, Tom. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> It's Sorry. a quiet life more than 15 years after she became an infamous household name. She avoids the media, declining to give interviews, but a representative for her tells people that Noah is finally at peace and living a quiet life. Yo, 
This is crazy. She's at peace. To do this. That's some funny shit. She's at peace. If this was a man, think about this. <laughs> if a man drove 900 miles to go meet a woman or even another man at the airport, run up on him, spray him with mace to try to kidnap him, do you think this story would be quite so forgiving? Uh, oh, yes, hell no. Yeah. Like, this he'd, is he'd, still be in, he'd still be in Leavenworth. Yeah. It's That's not story. true. That's not true. There's a lot of kidnappings that happen all the time, male, with men, and they don't do. They don't see a daylight. I mean, they don't see the day, a day in jail. When they court, they don't see a day in jail. Yeah, because you know they don't. Just like she didn't go to jail. Name one. Uh, can you name one that went to jail? <laughs> I didn't say that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's not how this works. Yeah, name one. <laughs> Uh-huh. Name one. Name one. Name one of what? Name one what? Name one kidnapping that the dude committed and didn't go to jail. I don't know. Oh, okay, the ones that uh, for the one bitch in Detroit, I mean in uh, Michigan, they didn't go to jail. So, name for trying to kidnap, uh, they tried to kidnap the governor. They didn't they go did. to jail. Did they? Yes. Yes. Oh. The fuck are you mm. talking about? How long they go to jail for? I think they're still in jail. I like twenty five years, dude. <laughs> I don't think they're in jail, bro. They is. Hold on, let's look it up. They oh, went to jail. Yeah. I don't think so. Hold on. Yeah, I think y'all. So you were uh, full think, of crap. I don't think they went to jail because the FBI was behind it. So yeah, that, that's why they went they to still jail. Went, the first two were convicted, sir. Mm, so they didn't convict the FBI agents who set the whole thing up. No, that's oh, of course mm. not. Okay, so in other words, the people that <laughs> the FBI agents that did it didn't go to jail. Yeah, what they literally mean? set it up. The funny thing is, right? That was not your statement. And mm. You're trying to change it around. How am I changing no, it? They went to jail, sir. Yeah, no, they I said they didn't go to jail. They did. They obviously jail. did. The, okay, so the FBI agents went to jail? Sir, Who set it up? Sir, they no. were the plotters. Sir, they were sir, the plotters. Sir, 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 sir. Yes, sir. That's not how that works and you and know you it. know that's not how that works. Ah, right? How does that not work like that? Because that's not what you tried to prove. See, the thing is, you got... So, in other words, you, a, they're, they're, so they're allowed to entrap people? That's what you're saying? Yes, sir, apparently. Yes, or, sir. Is yes, entrapment, sir. or is entrapment against the law? That's against the law, but apparently they did it. Ah, ah, there we go. There we go. So, in other words, my statement still stands. No, it doesn't. You no, said it doesn't, they didn't sir. go to jail. No, oh, doesn't. my God. They, they didn't go to, go to jail. jail. But, no, you're saying the uh, FBI yes. agents didn't go to jail. People didn't yes. go to jail. Um, Adam Fox, 16-year sentence. Joseph mm. Morrison, 10 to 20-year sentence. 10 to 20? Uh, Mary Croft, 19 years, 7 months. Mm. Caleb Franks, 4 years. Mm. Um, Again, Pete Musco, twelve to twenty. What about the FBI agents, though? That's uh, it Paul we, Bueller. Who were the FBI 20. agents? Who, who were the FBI agents? Well, can we can dude, we get their they, name? Can we get those names? No, they, they undercover. They never give their names. They were not. Un, well, I guess they were undercover, but they set the whole thing up. So in All other right, so, words, that, so was, the thing is, that was full entrapment. Know, so that's that was full entrapment. The, so hold up, you don't know these guys' names, so we can't say they even existed to do this. So nobody. So they well, it, it was it was so. it was actually in the court court case of that. Okay, they well, were give the me names. Then. Well, give me their names. Yes, yes know, they were know. known as informant number one, number two, and number three, sir. Give me their names. Uh, yeah, exactly. Name. He, he's right. He's right. That's, no, 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 that's not a kidnapper. It's a informants. Give me their names. They can't be informants if they're the ones pl- set up the whole thing. So we call them informants or we call them plotters? What are we doing? Which one? I call them entrapment nurse. If that's even a word. No, sir. Well, sir, a jury in Michigan disagreed with you. Well, the jury in Michigan is full of shit. Several They're juries probably... in Michigan disagreed with you, sir. So, okay, that's, like, so that's like me So saying... in other words, again, is entrapment illegal or, or legal? Apparently because it wasn't you... entrapment. Yeah. Apparently it wasn't entrapment because it wasn't it's found that way by the court. 
Well, <laughs> I guess the law was set up to be against uh, anyone that uh, wanted to uh, kidnap that bitch. So this is the thing. So say me and you together. And yes, you know, yes. Kidnapping laws are usually set up to stop people from kidnapping victims. Not yes. really if someone else is the actual one personally plotting against it. If they were the 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 the, the, the conspirators against the shit from, from, to, from the start, they should be in jail as well. Because they wouldn't even have the idea if the motherfuckers wouldn't set it up. Is what I'm saying. That's yeah. that's what they say. Well, that's what they now, say. What was, now, what was proved in court is different, sir. You don't know that because you wasn't in there. You don't know the, the facts behind the case. But you wasn't in there either. So what are you talking about? I don't. About? I don't know. And I, I, guarantee guarantee was, I guarantee you're, you're I guarantee it was. I guarantee you. You're making factual statements hold on, hold on. not knowing, hold on. sir. Can we get back on the subject, so, please? So Crazy what, so are you? No, he did do that. I'm about to drop his dumb ass. That's what he do. As a NASA astronaut, Nowak went into space as a mission flight engineer in July 4th, 2006. She was a crew member on the 13th day shuttle mission, operating in the robotic arm for several spacewalks. Then a married mom of three young kids. They just got to keep putting that there. She was also a flight officer in the United States Navy. Uh, that means she drove a, she rode a, she flew a jet. Um, she would be the navigator in the back seat. So she didn't try jets. I ain't impressed with this bitch. But less than a year later, her life shattered. Oh, oh, her life shattered, huh? Yes, yeah, she, yeah, she didn't shatter it. Her life, yeah, shattered. life shattered. In February yeah. 2007, Noah drove 900 miles from Houston to Orlando in her car. She had a trench coat, a black wig, pepper spray, and a BB gun, a rape, a rope, whoa, trash bags. An eight inch knife and other items. So that's not a kit to kidnap somebody and kill them. Time. Oh, you're asking gonna, me now? Yeah, she she was going to uh, throw her a birthday party with that. Yeah, just because you have a knife doesn't mean she's probably going to spread some butter, motherfucker. With pepper spray? Yeah, sometimes you need pepper on your butter. And trash bags. Uh, just in case the party got really crazy. They needed, they needed to wrap their feet around something, you know, so they don't leave, don't leave uh, uh, any uh, imprints on the ground. I'll tell her, I'll tell her to call you then. Uh, in the detail that captured the public's attention, police report claimed that she had, a sp she had space diapers with her so she wouldn't have to stop for the bathroom break. That bitch had huggies. Stop playing. I, at this point, I don't even care if she did or didn't. It's just funny. It's a part of the story now. What you about yeah. to say, man? Oh, and nobody said specifically space diapers. Mm -hmm. They make they keep they keep on making that, that very specific point, don't they? Oh yeah. Cause they, cause everybody yeah. just say diapers, and they be like, "No, she didn't have space diapers on." Well, I didn't say that, bitch. Yeah. Uh, she had the incontinence diaper on. I had a I had a I had a corporal at my job. They used to walk around with the incontinence diapers. I didn't know what the fuck they were. I don't know why I said that. I take that back. Nowak was wearing a black wig and, and a trench coat when she approached Colin Shepard, Colin Shep Shipman car in a parking lot at Orlando International Airport. So what you thought she was doing? A talk to her time? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. What would you say? Nowak was wearing a black wig, a trench coat when she approached Colleen Shipman's car in the parking lot of Orlando International Airport. Mm-hmm. She banged on the shipment's vehicle and begged for a ride. When shipment rolled down the window, Novak sprayed her with pepper spray and tried to get in the car. No, that's just showing that she was ready for the party. She was ready to party. I mean, I would have gave her a little something back in the day. She wasn't too terrible back in the day. She like a regular mom. You know what I mean? She probably would have cut me a couple of checks. Shipman fled the scene shaken but unhurt. Police arrested Nowak on attempted murder and kidnapping charges. Uh, the attempted murder is kind of strong. That's a big Not strong really. case of bullshit. Not really. Because she didn't try to really kill him. She went with a BB gun, knife, and a trash bag. And rope. Yeah, well, so why don't you say it's strong, Mia? Um... See, notice most of the stories cut out the rope and the knife. Okay. 
Because that, that's what tells you it, it was uh, she was up to no good. Mm. You but know, the BB gun right could have been used to scare. Yeah, to scare to get her into the car just in case she didn't yeah. want to do it. But the knife it, got yeah. specific uses. And, and it ain't cutting up breakfast. Mm -hmm. I don't know why she just ain't a real gun. In the trash bags. So you think the attempted murder was a justified charge? Well, and I think it was based off of what she told them in that interview that later got pulled down. Everybody was protecting this hoe, huh? Oh yeah, dude. This was a major embarrassment. Just like just, just like this was a major embarrassment for NASA and the Navy. Hmm. The story soon became international news when the, the details emerged about the altercation. Shipman had recently begun dating Bill o o Oflin, an astronaut who had once dated Noah. The resulting case was dubbed the Astronaut Love Triangle. The aftermath, the bizarre attack plunged Oflin and Shipman's new relationship into an unwelcome national spotlight. It caused consequences for their careers and turned him into a turned them into a punchline on late night talk shows. I don't know why people. You put any well, Mayo put blame on him. Mayo, you know, you about you, time. You put any blame on this guy? Uh, no, he's the only thing he's guilty of is giving dick to two different people, two different females. And uh, Mayo said you're not supposed to do that at work. Uh, no, that's bullshit because most relationships are started from being at work. What the fuck are you talking about? Yes, but sir, they're they're usually not started by married people in the military. That doesn't matter if they're married or not. That's just that's just. That's yes, just it does, way. sir. Nah, not really. Adultery is a charge under the UCMJ. Yeah, but did they get charged with that? Yes, yeah, sir. He they was removed. To. Yeah, both of them had to. That's he was removed from his NASA assignment. Yeah, being removed and being and and then he getting was he was the first me. person from the Navy ever discharged from NASA, sir, due to behavior. Okay, but that, that's not. But that's still saying that he was charged with something else. But he he probably wasn't charged for committing adultery. No, he, well, he committed no crime other than adultery in the military. Yeah, yeah man, well, again, but again, did is that what they removed him for? What else would they remove yes. him for? Then? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm asking. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I happy. told you that already. Jesus Christ! Get him. You know what, man? You need scared. a motherfucker. Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom. We missed you, brother. You know we did. Fuck him. <laughs> the couple eventually got married. Colleen Shipman Oflin spoke out to people in 2016 in the only interview she has ever given. After the attack, the thoughts, I'm going to be okay, she recalled, but it never was okay after that. No, you got the man. You all right, Bill? Noak also, also faced several severe repercussions in 2008. She and her husband, Richard, divorced. She pled guilty in 2009 to the reduced charge of burglary and misdemeanor battery. I can see that. I can see why they did it. Because if they messed up the... Um, if they messed up the Miranda, then I can see why. But even the even the burglary, she a dumbass because she told him she burglarized that she went into the house without permission. She told on herself with that. That's just stupid. And the Wait, she had the key. Been. Yeah, but they broke up. She didn't have permission to be in the house anymore. We don't know that. If she had a key, she can do whatever she wants. Just giving that's the open it, open in invitation if you didn't ask for the key back. Really? Yeah. So you give a key to your mom. Mm -hmm. or your ex uh, your mom. Mm -hmm. And she just come in your house and just take all your valuables. That's well, that's if you gave them a key, that's giving them an open invitation that they can come. They can come in and leave. You don't give a key to a stranger. So if you give a key to yeah, no matter how you look at it, did he back. did he ask for the key back? It doesn't matter if you broke up. It does matter. It does it matter. Is. It does. All it that does. matters. No, it don't. It does matter because if you didn't ask for the key back, you still they still have an open ended. Fucking invitation that they can come and do as they please. Sir, it's no uh, open ended fucking law. What are you talking about? Who says that they can't? If you, okay, try, uh, you, you can argue that in court and lose because no, you can't, apparently you, not because she got charged with burglary. What the fuck are you talking about? She got charged with burglary? That's just what did she steal? 
What's she still? God damn. This motherfucker's retarded. What is she still? About? What is she still? She went into his, his computer and took his emails. She okay, did he? Anything. Did she get convicted of burglary? Are you fucking kidding me? I will stab you in the eye with a pen. She she pled she pled guilty in two thousand nine to a reduced charge of burglary and misdemeanor battery. Oh, okay, well, she, then, then and then what is? And I said the only reason why she got charged with burglary is because she told him she went into the house. She would have never got charged with that if the dumb bitch ain't opened her mouth. During the court hearing, she said she was sincerely sorry for her actions and promised. Squatters she have never... a right, sir. I'm not doing this. She said she was sincerely sorry for her accident and promised that she would never contact Oakland again. Do you think she kept that promise? Yeah. She's white. Yeah, she prob- she did it. No, sir. We just read a story yesterday where a white woman contacted her, her child's father 7,436 times in a year. What are you talking about? Uh, she was Polish, sir. Mel, did she keep her promise? I don't know if... Um, I doubt it. Because crazy, crazy bitches just don't, crazy don't just wash off. You know what mm. I mean? Oh, she it was, does. If you have, if you have good dick, to give it to her. She was given a year probation in 2010. So she, she didn't even go to jail. Mm. Oh, she got off clean. She got off she real do, clean. She didn't do not one day. No. And received on other than honorable discharge for the Navy. 15 years after the infamous attack, everyone has tried to move forward. The Oaklands married in 2010, settled in Alaska. They really got away from this crazy hoe. They run the website, adventureright.com. Uh, we need to go there, y'all, and ask if we get an exclusive, which promotes writing for kids. This is the second crazy bitch that wrote a book for... No. Nah, I'm not going to say that. Remember hey, the crazy, dude. A... She's a victim. I know. I shouldn't have said that. The... um. Remember the mom I told you the story I did yesterday, Mayor, with the mom who yeah. killed her husband and wrote a book? Oh, yeah. Shipman also, <laughs> Shipman also works as a writer. She published, she published her first novels, Eerie, in 2015 under the pen name, <laughs> pen name CM. <laughs> what the fuck is you talking about? That's funny. Eerie? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that just hit me. I ain't know what the fuck he was talking about. Under the Pete and Penn name CM McCoy, they have a 10 year old son, Junior. Junior, Junior. And Noah has moved on as well, despite the tough times in her past. Tough times? Bitch, she created all this. Her attorney told people that in 2019 that she is finally in a better place, simply saying she's doing well. Oh, man. Women are crazy, dude. Women are crazy. Women are fucking crazy. Only woman I think y'all are giving her a hard time. All she did, all she did, was love too hard. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's I it. That one. I give you that one. She We're just loved. jealous that we don't have women that have that dedication to us. This is sad that y'all don't. I don't, 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 don't have that in your life. You know, sad that y'all don't have that in your life. Maybe you need a woman that's gonna drive. Go bash it crazy over you. That's what no. you need. Yeah. No, sir. No, sir. How else can you, how else do you show your love? Um, yeah, exactly. Not through, fel- sir. Not through felonies. Well, it say? wasn't a felony. She, she was burglary. It was misdemeanors. <laughs> she was charged with those, but she pled down to misdemeanors. So that's a good, that's a good way to do it. So, you know. Astronaut in other words, so in other words, she didn't have any felonies, so she did it through all misdemeanors. She just shows she she loves. She loves crazy odds, crazy hard. That's what you're sticking with. <laughs> crazy being the the key the key phrase there. Like I'm not like I'm not even letting him. Um, I'm not even letting this dude get to me. What do you he mean, keeps, he, he's trying me. He's trying me. How how am I trying you? I'm just saying the chick loved very hard, and she didn't do it in the felony version. She did it in the misdemeanor version. That's all. 
So it's what better to mean? do it in the misdemeanor version? Oh, of course, because felony means you should go to jail. Unless you plead down. So that it shows there's something wrong with our uh, institution. So women should get away when they do something like that to men? Oh, no. She should She should have spent every last day in jail. But men being men gave her the gave her the option to plead down. Men account for all accountability for women. Uh, all right, whatever. So this is what uh Davis sent me. I don't know how you cyber cyber stalk your own child, but okay. Our case of a mother accused of cyber stalking her own daughter, the Michigan woman is now facing. Ooh, oh, we. Ooh, we. This, like, <laughs> God damn. Is it the mugshot? Yeah, like, that's they horrible. Can't, they can't be looking this bad. Just like it got to be the mugshot. <laughs> it got to be the right. mugshot. Dog. Yeah, that it's is horrible. Got this crazy look to him every time. It got to be the mugshot. Felony charges and Trevor Alt is here with more. Trevor, the mystery, the motive is still a mystery this morning. It is, Cecilia. There's no confirmed motive, but there are some theories being floated out by prosecutors, including one that's saying this is something like cyber Munchausen's by proxy, where essentially they're making their child feel bad so that the child comes to them for comfort. <laughs> Whatever the cause, these allegations. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> what the cyber month housing by proxy? That's crazy. So, so she was harassing her own child <laughs> anonymously online. Oh, I've seen this case. I remember this case. I remember this case. All of her fat bitches and shit. Yo, fat bitch. <laughs> oh damn. No, I thought I thought this was a case where it got bad where her boyfriend was doing it too. Take the will. But I could be wrong. Oh, I think I remember. Oh my god! It wasn't just her. It was her. Uh, oh, I think it was a boy, not the boyfriend, but the uh, her the the girl, the mother's boyfriend was doing it. Her husband was doing it as well. Jesus Christ! This is some crazy times, folks. Issues are extensive. And they are in. Oh, what you think she said when they walked in? <laughs> uh, ma'am. Have you been sending your daughter text? Who? Who? If you know a person say who, you know they're guilty. Like that, I, I, that, this is one that I, I think I wouldn't. I've never heard of before. You harassing your own child so they can come to you for sympathy. Like I don't even know. Can you even? Can you even charge a person for this? Oh. I mean, I, I can see it if she's, like, trying to get her kid to break up with the dude. Like, if he's a piece of shit. So you think you need to cyberstalk your, dog, your daughter to get her to break up with somebody? Or, or, I, I don't know what the messages contained and who they were uh, aimed at. Okay, let's listen. You know, she might have been acting like some girl who's been with her boyfriend. Hmm. What if she wanted her boyfriend? What if she wanted her younger boyfriend? That daughter's boyfriend. Man, she's probably just one of the moms. Yeah, that, then we got a Lifetime movie there. Mm-hmm. Spoofed. She just used spoofed. She spoofed the fuck out of him. Women do it's not some time. hacker game. Yeah, it's a spoof. They didn't <laughs> cut it out. Counts which each have the possibility of several years in prison. According to investigators, these messages were first reported to the school when Lakari was working there as a basketball coach. Wow. With so, so, so do you think she still keeps your custody at a, a child? Like, what do you do? Like, how do you keep... You, there's no way the child can still stay with you. Like, I don't know how that works. Well, obviously the mother's... How old was the she, kid? Like, Whew. Yeah, they I thought the child was a teenager. She was a teenager, but they didn't say how, like the age. I don't know, mm-hmm. David. How old was the child, David? David said she was in her town. He was in the town because he sent me the story, so he know. Damn, black guy, minus seventy percent of child abusers is mothers. That's a fact. 
That's a fact. Mothers don't have con- uh, control over their bodies once they start abusing you. Mm. This is another story he sent. I got enough trauma. Well, it's, with that, it's that whole trauma thing, you know. Well, you trauma you know. Yeah. So this is the hiccup girl. Jennifer Me hiccup girl convicted of first degree murder. The sound echoes through the TIA terminal, announcing the arrival of 15-year-old Jennifer Me. Why is she sm- What the fuck is wrong with her? That sound has been her constant companion since the first hick. Four weeks ago tomorrow. Then Jennifer. Oh, this is a different story. I know. Tour, appearing on local and national news shows, hoping someone would be able to offer a solution. None have worked so far. Mm. Oh, David. In 2007, I can't play that music. 15-year-old Jennifer Me from St. Petersburg, Florida, became famous after gaining worldwide attention. No, you're good. You can play that music. The hiccup girl. After becoming stricken with a case of uncontrollable and unstoppable hiccups, she hiccuped 50 times per minute for five weeks straight, <laughs> but they never subsided completely and would return in bouts on and off again. She tried everything from eating soft foods, including peanut butter, breathing in a bag, standing on her head, and other strange methods, to having someone scare her and was even advised by a friend to try smoking marijuana. Stop. Stop it. We oh, stop marijuana it. cures everything. Just ask them. Uh, David says she was 15 to 16. The daughter from the last story. Oh, okay. Well, I've been to um, neurologists, pediatricians, um, cardiologists to get MRI. How about you lose some weight, you fat bitch? I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Her eyes, cats, getting yeah, blood work, right. everything. <laughs> she is kind of thick for it. She needs to, you know. Oh, yeah. We've tried a tablespoon of peanut butter. I don't know how she can eat that much sugar, having the hiccups. Mustard, yeah. That didn't show. That damn sure didn't stop it. it. Didn't stop her, did it? No. Them hiccups no, did sir. not push that plate to the side. Mm. It definitely ain't tell her push that plate to the side. Um, of water, lots of water. Other suggestions have been impractical or illegal. Somebody told me to smoke marijuana, take a hit of marijuana. That would help. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, right? Um, <clears throat> this is a little bit off topic, but. So just Pearly Dane's things, right? Did an interview with one of them little weird dudes. Like they did, she did a debate, and um, it just reminded me of it. So you know, like the little weird liberals and her little weird thing they got going on. So they did like a little debate back and forth, and she was telling them one part. So he was talking to her, talking to her about um, women not getting paid as much. So she brought up, he brought up doctors, female doctors not getting paid as much as male doctors. So, and he was like, what do you think is the disparity in it? Why don't you think they are getting paid more? And of course she had some dumbass answer. And I, and I was like, well, you got to ask what kind of doctors are we talking about? So family care doctors are not going to get as paid as much as surgeons. So she should have hit him with that. Like, what do you like? It's not a fair comparison, because if a, a uh, if a doctor is just a, a family practitioner, that she's not going to get paid a, a a whole hell of a lot of money, but a surgeon will. So, what kind of doctors are which? So anyway, they were going back and forth. So then he was like, "Well, your mom was a uh, the president of your dad's company." So she was like, "Yeah." So, but he only did he only did that. Because he wanted to get a grant from the government, so he just gave her like a title just to give her, just to make her, you know, let her, so they can get a grant from the government. And I was like, "Dude, you told on your mom and dad that they committed fraud, man." Yeah, that's 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 federal fraud. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? She said that <laughs> it was like thirty thousand people watching, and she told them that her dad committed federal fraud on YouTube. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And so when her dumb ass talk about something illegal, that just made me think about it. You're not going to go that route. Oh, oh, definitely not. (laughs) It got so bad, she had to take medicines like Benadryl and Valium to help her sleep. Wait a minute. She took Benadryl and Valium together. 
Yeah. Yo, Benadryl well, puts you to sleep. Benadryl will put you to sleep. For, for, for sure, for sure. It don't do shit for me. And make me sneeze at the same time, so it just depends. Benadryl don't do a damn thing for me. But Benadryl and Valium, I ain't know you can mix them together. That seems like that ain't a good idea. He dropped out of it depends it depend on the dose of the volume. It depends on the dose. Mm. What would you do dirty? We ain't talking about you, sir. Let's not talk about drugs. Time gonna start talking about XT and Sean John going up here talk, talking about taking uh taking shrooms. To disruption. Desperate to find a cure for her affliction, she, she kills to the world for answers. And as it turned out, the world was listening. Primarily known for the interview she gave to NBC's Today Show. Networks and radio stations all over the country were competing with one another to interview her. Eventually, she was treated by a doctor and prescribed a medication called Thorazine, which is commonly used to treat people for Tourette's syndrome, a condition that causes people to suffer from various tics involving. The medication made her kill somebody. I Thorazine. You. That's some strong shit. Mm. It sure is. It sure is. That that's some like strong antipsychotic shit there. So her hiccup was caused by being crazy. Well, literally those I mean, if you're saying she they gave her Thorazine, that, that I mean, you know, it does <laughs> it does have side effects of anger, so hmm. uncontrollable anger. And it's the same thing with um Others like the seizure meds they do, they give to you the same thing. Some of them I've been on, I know me being on some of the seizure medication I had, I had bouts of anger as well. So they had to, they had to take me off of them. So, yeah, depends okay. on the drug. So, you think that the, the, the kind of medication made her commit a crime? It's possible. It's possible. They even got cigarette medication. What is it called? What is the, they used to, they used to push it in fucking, uh, the military for people to quit smoking. Uh, what is it called? Well, butrin. Well, butrin. But yes, yes, yes. That shit, that shit get, makes you have, uh, uncontrollable anger as well, as well as can't sleep and, um, yeah, a whole bunch of shit, bro. It's, it's, it's crazy. My thing is this. If, if you want to smoke, smoke. But if mm -hmm. you want to stop, stop. But don't give me a medication that's going to cause me to do worse than what smoking would do. Like, I, yeah, if I kill, if I smoke cigarettes, I might kill myself. But don't give me medication yeah. that have me kill every goddamn body else and send me to jail. Well, that's body. part of it. It, it. it makes you want to kill yourself, right? So, oh, that's a good way to stop then. Yeah, that's all well, problem. That that was that's why they stopped. They, that's why they stopped trying to give it to people because it, it, it. But while you're taking a class, they'll tell you this medication may want you. It may, you may have bouts of uh, suicide ideation, like for real, for real. Mm. Yeah, I need some medication to stop smoking cigars one day. Fuck it. Repetitive movements or unwanted sounds. For the most part, the treatment did help in calming down her annoying condition. It didn't even stop it. Then three years later, at the age of 19, Jennifer made headline news again when she shocked the nation after she was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. She still was mm. That's going to get me something. Now no, I'm going to that out. No, no, you're good. We get on that too. So-called hiccup girl from St. Pete. You might remember when she first made headlines back in 2007. Hiccup girl needs to do some sit -ups. Wouldn't quit. Well, she's in the news again for something much worse. Jennifer Mee is accused of meeting her alleged victim on a social networking site. Police say Mee lured a man to a home, oh. robbed two men with her, robbed him at gunpoint. Jennifer Mee did not speak in court, but standing close to a microphone, her sobbing. Is that her mom or her dad? She's. I know that's her mom. They look just alike. Oh, her sister. They look just alike. And hiccuping were amplified as attorney John Trevina. Oh, I would be hiccuping like a motherfucker in court. I would be disruptive. <laughs> I would, I would, listen, you're going to sense me anyway. I'm going to make everybody life hell inside that courtroom. I'm going to hiccup. I'm going to be uncontrollable. 
argued she should be released from jail. He's arguing that this was a case of me following the wrong crowd. Yeah, oh! Did you see her co-defendants? Did y'all see her co-defendants? Please tell me y'all no. seen them. Uh, let me, I'm going to look it up for y'all. And There's y'all, uh, Leron uh, Rayford and Lamont Newton are accused of... Mm, mm, mm. Oh, she was... Oh, yeah. Well, you mm, know. Mm, it was the Jigaboos that got her to do it. The Jigaboos mm, that got her to do mm, it. Mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Which one was she, she riding on? Uh, the one to the right. With the beard? Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Man, well, she was probably know. she was probably getting she was probably getting double penetration, so she probably knocked off both of them. After she starts smoking that weed, that's what happened. See, black mm. COG do dirty. Drugs lead to you committing crimes with Negroes. Mm, Killing Shanon <laughs> Griffin in a robbery. In 2010, Jennifer Mee was living away from home in an apartment complex in St. Petersburg, Florida, with her boyfriend, Lamont Newton, mm. and two other roommates, Lauren Rayford and Jennifer Sharon. Jennifer Sharon stated that she they, had Look been- at them, all of them N-word lovers. All mm-hmm. of them. All of them. As, they should. As they should. Look at Kai. Look at Kai when she was younger. No. Look at Kai when she was younger. She didn't have black hair. I knew you was about to say that. Look at Kai when she was younger. Staying away from what? the Negro. That's why our family told her stay away from you people. I don't blame her. At work all day. And we're Y'all cause nothing but destruction. Turned home later that evening to find all three were home. The four of them made plans to watch a movie, Paranormal Activity, but that they, meaning Jennifer Mee, Newton, and Rayford, first needed to go out to get some money. So they left mm-hmm. while Sharon stayed behind, unaware of their intentions and not involved in their plan. Sharon would later go on to testify in court for the prosecution as to what she witnessed next after the three arrived back home later that night. The idea that the four would watch a movie together never happened. And Sharon would be the first to witness the aftermath of something that should have never happened. Something that would have never happened had Jennifer Mee not initiated the plan. Oh, she, she's the king queen, the queen pin, huh? Oh, yeah. Heard the phrase, it takes two to tango. In this case, it took three. Shannon Griffin was a 22-year-old young man and once a talented high school football player who transplanted to Florida and got a job working at Walmart after Hurricane Katrina decimated his hometown in Petal, Mississippi. His family described him as a quiet guy who wouldn't hurt a soul. Finding out about his death and that he was murdered was devastating to them. Right before they learned he was dead, they were expecting a visit from him for a family get-together that never got to happen and would never happen ever again. Jennifer met Shannon online through a social media platform where the two became friends, yet they never met in person until that fateful night. What? And remember, she had once been extremely famous and well-known as the Hiccup Girl, and he probably knew this and became flattered that she was even talking to him. At some point, the two planned to meet... She was a fat... A couple stops. Stop. That's weird. Just to even say that dumb shit. I don't know why they brought that up. That was dumb to bring up. That was crazy, man. That made no sense. Meet up, whereas he believed they would be going out on a date. Griffin's cousin, Doug Bolden, spoke to the judge recalling how the 22-year-old was in a great mood when he last saw him just before he was killed. He was going to go. So you can't even meet up with white women now and not worry about getting robbed and shot. What has the fucking world come to? <laughs> has the fucking world come to? Mayo, what you got to say for your people now? Back in the day, you could meet up with a white girl and be safe. Now they're getting you robbed or shot. Mayo? Uh, that's not true because you we always did. They got robbed or shot when you hooked up with white girls. Yeah, or but beat you to No, nah, but not like this. They just, nah, not like this. On a date. He just... You don't... You don't think getting 
hung strung up by a whole bunch of white folks. Yeah, but that's because you were sneaking over there. We talking about you and in 2010 thinking everything mm. good. That was something different. You know you had no business being over there with that white woman. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. Thought he was going on a date. Just a young college kid grinning ear to ear about to go on it. That's date. why I stay off of Bumble. This can be. According to Griffin's cousin, Doug Bolden, Shannon was very excited about going out on a date with Jennifer. He dressed up in new clothing, put on cologne, and headed out to meet at a location set up by Jennifer. In addition, Jennifer also told I him hope she- that's not the picture she used to get him. Oh, she thick. She fat. <laughs> oh, I know. That's known as thick, sir. No, sir. She that's said, she, she that's known as thick, sir. But if this is the picture that he used, that she used to get him, he, he, he come on, dog. She had to use something better than this fucking photo. This ain't the one. If you fat when you doing a picture from up here, then you know you got a problem. Usually, you fat women do pictures like this to make them look skinny. Come on, dog. He tripping. He was just being horny. He thought he had some easy pussy that night. Let's be honest. That's a fact. Up with some people oh, yeah. to purchase marijuana. When Shannon arrived, at- I thought she didn't use weed. Lion ass. No, that was back in the day, though. Lion ass. In an area in downtown St. Petersburg, he met Jennifer at a vacant house that was up for sale, where she then directed him to walk down an alley beside the house to meet with her two friends that were waiting to sell him the marijuana. And where Shannon would quickly find out the day and the marijuana transaction were both just a ruse. Mm. He had been set up. By the time he rounded the corner at the end of the alley, she started to walk away from the scene, and he was met in the dark by two strangers, Lamont Newton and Laron Rayford, where they tried robbing him at gunpoint. However, they didn't expect Shannon to fight back, and when he didn't submit to them, Laron Rayford used a 38 caliber six-shooter handgun and fired all six shots with four hitting Shannon, three damn. times in the chest and once through the arm, killing him. The fourth bullet was found lodged in the overhang of the vacant house. In a panic, Rayford dropped the gun at the scene, and he and Newton took off running. God damn! Newton, what the fuck is this? The Wild Wild West? Look at that haircut. The yeah, fuck they stole that from Grandpa. God damn! Well, they it's did. Like it's like a ten-inch thirty-eight. God damn! <laughs> God damn! Where you keep that bitch at? Jeez. On your knee? Yeah, that's a fact. (laughs) That shit is crazy. Mess of evidence, but not before taking his wallet from his pants pocket first, with a small amount of money that was in it. Shannon was shot to death for $50. Yo, they still robbed him after they killed him. Oh, of course. Uh, I hope they do life. I hope they do life. He was going to go on a date for $50. Never mind. That's beside the point. And, and that's a fat girl. He could have yeah, got her McDonald's and got first some. First to arrive back home was Jennifer Me. At the time, Jennifer Sharon, the fourth roommate who testified for the process. Why is she in a wheelchair, folks? Why is she in a wheelchair? I'm so sick of folks. And, and if she... You know what? Let me keep. I'm already in probably in a Section Eight apartment, and then making money off of renting out to the other ones. Well, she was dating one of the dudes. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was dating one of the dudes. Execution said that when Jennifer Me arrived back to the apartment, she was out. Of- I ain't even noticed the wheelchair in the back when this, when she she first showed the picture. A breath, panicked, and told Sharon she heard gunshots. Then shortly after, and Sharon would later testify, Laron Rayford showed back up looking distraught and like he had been in a fight and told her that Lamont Newton had been shot. Only Newton was right. Your daughter come home with this dude in the orange. <laughs> what you going to say? Bet you Start saving up, bail money. Bet you don't get up out of my house. You got to be kidding me. 
right behind him, and the third showed back up and announced that it wasn't him that was shot, but that another man had been shot, the victim, Shannon Griffin. Rayford and Newton were arrested within a few hours after the crime. At first, Jennifer Mead was not a suspect until they questioned her. During her first interview with the police, she told them a complete lie. She claimed her roommate, Laron Rayford, killed Shannon because Laron, who was also Jennifer Sharon's boyfriend, thought there was a love triangle involved. Told you, I was right. Shannon, something Sh so who you think she was? Who you think the other chick was messing with? She was down with both of them. No, this is the chick in a wheelchair. Oh. That's her boyfriend. I think she was just lying to uh, separate herself from the crime. Mm -hmm. mm, that could be. And testified to as a lie and had first-hand knowledge of the crime after it happened when the three returned to the apartment. Were you faithful to LeBron? <laughs> Jennifer Mee claimed that Lamont Newton, Jennifer Mee's boyfriend at the time, and... Oh. She was with the rough one. Ah, uh, she was with the rough one. Land of the dreadhead. I yeah. see you. Yeah, she was with the rough one. Yeah, he gave her a little piece of that penis, and then she went crazy. Them hiccups went right away. <laughs> urged her to confess the to throat the throat care that nothing mm -hmm. happened to her because she was known as the hiccup girl. But that advice would turn out to be wrong, and her confession led to her arrest. Oh, my God. Did you hear that shit? He told her nothing would happen to her because she's the hiccup girl. It's because she's the hiccup Sounds girl. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. You don't, you don't believe so? I'm about tired no, She's of not folks. an astronaut, sir. <laughs> I'm about tired of folks. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm so over people. That is the dumbest advice. Ever, you gonna be good, girl, because you was famous for a week back ten years ago. Oh my God! Police searched the apartment. They found bloody clothing soaking in bleach and Shannon's wallet in an air vent. That Why didn't these fools just start? It? Why are you upset with dumb people? Why are you upset with that nasty people? ass air vent? Dude, yeah, that shit is disgusting. But, but I mean, I I just want to meet a smart criminal one day. This is like it got to be, it got to be a smart one one day, man. This is crazy. Anybody else would have just threw a through the clothes in like a abandoned house somewhere far away, like anything in a river, anything. These fools took the clothes home, soaked them in bleach, and even kept. Why would you even keep the ID? I don't even understand that part. Like, if anything else, throw the ID away. Why keep the fucking ID in the wallet? What 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 are you doing? They jigga booze, man. They jigga booze, man. I don't even I mean, get it. I mean, you just stop having high hopes for these niggas. Damn. This is just stupid. Contained a work ID and his driver's license that had Jennifer Mee's fingerprint on it. But the one thing she didn't count on and ultimately got her convicted was the critical mistake she made during a recorded jailhouse phone call that she made to her mother after her arrest, which... Mm. Look at the mom. The mom probably got a little black man on the side, too, right about now. Oh, yeah, for that's for sure. ...as the so-called mastermind behind the plot to rob Shannon when she told her mother that she set the whole thing up. Jesus. This call may be recorded or monitored. Oh, my Jesus. They fucking told her the car was going to be monitored, and she still told her mom she did it. You know how many people are convicted off of jail calls, man? Th this is it's amazing crazy. to me. This is amazing to me. Hello? Hello, Jeff. What's going on? Why are you in jail? Damn. Who yeah, Mama kill? knows she's a bad seed. What the fuck? Nah, oh my God, Jennifer, you can't believe I can't believe this. Who did you kill? What the fuck? <laughs> what the? 
<laughs> what the fuck is that? What is that? Yeah, Mama knows what first degree murder means. <laughs> Yo, that is crazy to me. First of all, the mom wasn't even surprised she got a call from jail. Let's just throw that out there. Uh, and mama's got three color hair. Yeah. So that's always a bad sign. That's fucking crazy. For murder in the first degree. For yourself. Well, then how are they charging you with attempted murder? Well, then how are they charging you with attempted murder? How did, how did she didn't say that? Unless the mom already knew. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> in the state of Florida, if someone is involved in a robbery that ends in death, then any person involved can be arrested and charged with first-degree murder, which carries a life or death sentence. John Trevina and Bryant Camarino, Jennifer Meese counsel, two of the best criminal defense attorneys in the area, defended her in court by saying their client was no mastermind and could not have come up with a plan that involved murder. Her lawyers tried playing the mental health card, claiming Jennifer suffered from schizophrenia, and Tourette's syndrome, which caused her unmanageable hiccup bouts and questioned whether she was competent to stay in trial. I the judge ordered a psychiatric yeah. evaluation and determined she knew right from wrong and found her competent to stay in trial and that a jury would hear the case to decide her fate, implementing Florida's culpability law that can find someone guilty of capital murder in a case such as this one. Her lawyers also argued since she didn't expect a murder to happen, nor did she believe a gun would be involved, and not the person who pulled the trigger, that she wasn't guilty of killing Shannon. Prosecutors Jan Olney and Christopher Labruzzo even stated they did not believe Jennifer set out that night intending to participate in a murder, but that she was guilty for setting it up. Before the trial, Jennifer Me. Yes, she's still a fat bitch. Who you th her? She looked like the other girl who killed her dad. Yeah. They all got that crazy look, man. These defense attorneys tried to offer a deal to the prosecution that she would plead guilty in exchange for a 15 year the eyes, man. But the prosecution turned that down, saying they would accept nothing less than starting at 25 years. Woo! After learning this, she refused to negotiate a deal. Believing she didn't deserve that much time and chose to take it to trial instead. Jesus During Christ. closing arguments, prosecutors were able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Jennifer Mee was guilty because of her own words from that jailhouse call she made to her mother when she admitted to setting up a robbery that resulted in a death, the murder of Shannon Griffin. In 2013 and three years on trial, the jury deliberated for four hours finding Jennifer Mee guilty of murder in the first degree. She was sentenced to life in prison without Damn. parole, as were her co-defendants, Lamont Newton and Leron Rayford. She is incarcerated at the Lowell Correctional Institution, a women's prison located in Marion County, north of Ocala. Jennifer Mee blames her fame as the hiccup girl, saying it all went to her head and eventually led her down the wrong path where she surrounded herself with bad people and their negative influence. But it's the choice she made and the lack of putting thought before action that landed her in prison for the rest of her life. Shannon was robbed at gunpoint. At some point, one must believe whether or not they intended to use it, it was included in their plan. They most likely expected him to cooperate, but instead Shannon chose to fight for his life and they chose to end it. He lost his life for less than the cost of a video game. I bought my son for Christmas. No, she didn't pull the Now she's got, no, like, she white supremacist tattoos on her neck. I, I was wondering what the fuck that women. was. And she lost weight. She still look crazy as fuck. With every intention to facilitate a plan, to use herself as bait and lure him under false pretenses to trick and rob him that ended his life. Had she been removed from the equation, Shannon would still be alive. So, 
I wonder how long is life in prison over there? Because some places, how long is life in prison in Florida, Uncle Tom? 20 years? 25? I think maybe 20, 25 years, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I I don't, I don't, I don't try to go. I don't try to go to jail, so I don't know. That's a fact. That's a fact. But that's why he, this is another interview they did with her fat ass. That music was depressing. <laughs> God. And as a 15 year old girl suffering from a peculiar ailment, not hiccuping, but her innocent demeanor quickly changed after prosecutors convicted Jennifer Me of murder. Now for the first time from behind bars and on the heels of her denied appeal, the hiccup girl speaks out. Here's ABC Action News anchor. 10, 20, or 25 years. Interview. Hmm. 25 for a uh, commission of a crime with a firearm. So yeah. she got so she got 25. So yeah. this happened in 2010. And she ain't got a possibility to parole. So she got no. 13 years in. So she got another 12 to do. You look exactly the same. Jennifer Me. Rem- no, she walking like a butch now. Remarkably similar to the teenager we first met in 2007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. We were there when she... Woo, she was a big mama back then. ...landed at TIA after a whirlwind TV tour. Five weeks of hiccuping had made the 15-year-old a sensation. <laughs> what happened to that sweet 15-year-old girl that we first met? I got some black dick. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even tell you. I got cased up with the wrong crowd of people, really. Um, unfortunately, when I started experimenting with drugs, I just felt like I was invincible to everything. People like her are dangerous, man. You know why? They feel no remorse in whatever they do. Oh, no. And they, they just blame it on anything else. Yeah. People like her are so dangerous, man. Because she doesn't, like, a do, like for anything else, a man lost their life and you were there. And you don't even show any type of remorse for this happening. I don't know if that's the medication that they gave her, but she, 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 I, I could see why they gave her that amount of time. I, you know, the first thing she could have came out and said was, you know, I, I feel so sorry for the, uh, for the, the person who died and his family. But only thing she's saying is she blaming everything on everybody else of why she did it. Not one, that's, just, that's man. Everything. Now 24 years old, she's serving a life sentence in maximum security at Lowell Correctional, her cell block, housing some of the 50 most violent women in Florida. And I'm just like... Oh, I got to do a story on that. The 50 most violent women in Florida. <laughs> I got to see what they did. I'm about to write that down. This is a nightmare. You know what They're I mean? probably nightmare. in Baker, Florida. It's just like, it is what it is. Jennifer is in maximum security for her own safety because of the celebrity story behind her name. Are you so surprised that you're still known as the Hiccup Girl? Um, some days I am because it's just like I know that it's a name that will never. Bitch, don't nobody know you. Yeah, damn. She more like the Stick Up Girl. Yeah. I'm so famous. You're in a damn jail cell. Die down. She claims those hiccups led to a string of bad decisions, most notorious, Mm. moving in with LaRon Rayford and boyfriend Lamont Newton. I felt like a lot of it was due to manipulation and being brainwashed, so to speak. Oh, my God. That night in October of 2010, her memory hazy from not sleeping for days it. and a high yeah, from a that... combination of ecstasy. Oh, 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 Uncle Tom. Oh, you ain't hear that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That reporter got some nice legs. That's the good shit, bro. And a high from a, a combination shit. of ecstasy, marijuana, and cocaine. Oh, mm. we was just living it up. Okay. Mm. We was living it up over there. Mm-hmm. Mm. She claims her roommates encouraged her to lure a man she met online, Shannon Griffin, to a dark alley so they could rob him. But the robbery turned into murder. In my mind, I was like, what do you mean you killed him? He was like, he's dead. 
And from there, it just seemed like everything unraveled. She still claims she had no idea the plan included a gun. To this day, I really don't know and understand what took place for them to do what they did. But state laws are among the strictest in the nation. If someone dies during a commission of a crime, everyone involved is just as guilty. Good. That's the way it should be. A Pinellas County jury convicted Jennifer of murder. Her own words on a recorded call to her mother sealing her fate. It was hoping that she would rescue me. The one state you don't want to be is in Florida. <laughs> novelist and New York Times bestseller became fascinated with how a media darling became a convicted killer. She does not belong in prison for the rest of her life. Via Skype, he tells me yes, she does. about Jennifer, one breath away, set to hit stands in February, will astound people. I mean, I was overwhelmed by what I found. Delving into revelations Jennifer discussed with me, including claims of being sexually assaulted. Oh, come on, man. Mind and beaten by her first boyfriend. I've written. Yo, come on, dog. What the fuck does this have to do with her setting up a robbery and somebody getting killed? Any excuse necessary. In 30 books, and probably 25 of those books are about female psychopaths. Jennifer for me does not fit into that category at all. We did research of our own, comparing Jennifer's life sentence to other high-profile murders. Valesa Robinson in 1998, a then 15-year-old convicted as an adult for helping murder her own mother. She served 13 years out of a 20-year sentence. 19-year-old Rachel Wade will be in her mid-40s when she's free after stabbing a romantic rival. <laughs> Catherine Pileggi, sentenced to 25 years for murdering her multi-millionaire boyfriend. But Jennifer's appeal? Denied in June. You are doing life in prison. What do you think would be fair? I think, me personally, I feel would be fair is at least 20 years. I do. Because, yes, somebody's life was taken. Somebody's a loved one. Somebody's child. Your attorney has said now there's less than a 1% to 2% chance of you ever getting out of here. How oh, ever? I oh, shit, ever. Scott nice. I've been locked up since I was 19. I can't stop fighting. I have a family that wants me home. Serena Fazan. ABC Action News. Oh, she never gets. Now, according to prison records, Jennifer Mee has been a model inmate. If you want to watch more of our exclusive jailhouse interview, go to abcactionnews.com. Also, there you'll find more details on the release of One Last Breath. But why maybe she should have been a model citizen before she went to prison. But why are these people caping for her all of a sudden now? Like, oh, she, you know, because <sighs> that, that, she was the hiccup girl. That S A man, like that's crazy, dude. <laughs> like th because that's the first thing they blame it on. You, when you try to look up the most, the fifty most dangerous women in the world, what keep popping up is the most dangerous, the most dangerous places for women. Like I don't even try to tell you, this is crazy. Google is biased like a mug. Oh yeah. Yeah, you don't get what you're searching for. I'm about you to get what up. they want you to see. Yeah, I'm gonna see on Duck Duck Go if I can find something. That's that's ridiculous. They don't even let you. They don't even want that out there. That was a good story, David. Thanks for sending it, man. I, I didn't I didn't even know that that happened, but that hoe. I'm I didn't know she was doing. She was never getting out. I don't know if it, I don't know if, if it should have been that extreme. That extreme. Especially looking at the other women who did crimes, but I can't be mad at it. She set up something. She set something up for a man to be uh, killed. But the woman who killed a multi-millionaire husband, uh, you know I got to do a story on that, huh? Yeah, I got to do a story on that. Y'all got any topics for me tonight for my show? Oh, boyfriend, my fault, Black Eyed Miller. I gotta find something. I mean, usually women get a lot lighter sentences than men. Yeah, it had to be something. 
it had to be something for her to get all that because that's that seemed like it was a little extreme. I thought like I thought they was gonna give her twenty five years, but for her to never see the light of day again. I mean, we could use her 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 own words, maybe because she was a celebrity. She didn't even talk. <laughs> A fat ass was no goddamn. Yeah, she was a celebrity, bro. Stop it. The That's fact that you bullshit. want the fact that you don't want to realize and recognize her celebrity status is appalling to me. Just, I just want to throw that out there. Mm. Uh, I don't know how much weight that holds, but you know her celebrity status was everything to her, and that's the reason why she did what she did. If if that makes sense. So they don't even have even a duck duck go. Okay, they do do better. Oh, my earpiece is about to go dead. Hold on one second. Let me switch one. Here's a good story. The 10 hottest female felons. Oh, you don't like this. The 10 hottest. Uh, well, we can do this one. This ain't like it's interesting. I'm giving females smoke for the next week because this got to stop. This got to stop. This gotta stop. Y'all need to get y'all angry. The ten most evil women in history. Look at them. Look at them. That the chicken that coat. Whoo! It's very. She looks common. like something off a Stephen King movie. Definitely, in fact, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, it's very common belief that women are a sign of love, care, humbleness that are generally known to be very polite, graceful, and poised. But actually, the history is full of such women that have truly changed the way of thinking about women. There were over times many women whose horrors horrified the whole world. There were the there were many most evil women uh, who enjoyed torture, brutality, <laughs> murders, and abuse for one reason or another. We always tend to focus on the evil men in the world and forget that some truly evil women in the world have lived. This article, however, will throw light upon the symbols evil women in the world. Armor, Greece. What y'all think she did? Um, um she looks like uh, she worked in a Nazi prison camp or something. That's a fact. She looks like she looked. You hit the nail on the head, man. She did. Uh, Didi said Jody Aries. Jody Arias was the one you asked me if I'd hit yesterday in the glasses, the long hair looking back. Oh, uh, okay. Arma Ida is Glil. Free state of Middleburg, died in 1945. Uh, she was employed at Nazi concentration camps at Ravensbrück and Auschwitz and was the warden of the women's section of the Virgin Belsen. Belson. Uh, she was convicted for crimes against humanity at the Belson trial and sentenced to death. Damn. She loved torture via different painful methods and wore a heavy boots as a habit. Greece also carried a pistol for the uh, facilitation of her various purposes. Executed at 22 years, 60 days of age. She was only 22. Damn. Yep. Greece was the youngest woman to die due to <laughs> Judically under English law in the baby sending me nothing. Uh in twentieth century on the nineteen forty five, Hamlin, Germany, she was nicknamed the Beast Beslin. Damn, the beautiful beast died Hayden von Auschwitz. She was beautiful. Yeah, Mary. She looked like a oh, really? bitch. Woo! Myra Hendley. What y'all think she did? She Look at Myra. Man. Yeah, I think she was a prostitute and killed men. I'm going to just go ahead and put that out there. I think she was a prostitute. Uh, 
Born in 1942, Myra Henley was an English serial killer in partnership with the Iron Bradley. She committed the rapes and murders of several... Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Together, these monsters were responsible for the kidnapping, and sexual abuse, and torture of murder of three children at the age of 12 and two teenagers in 16 and 17. Woo. She need to burn in hell. Oh, what the fuck? She's a prince. Princess, what's going on here? Isabella, Isabella of Castle, Castile, born in 1451 and died in 14, 1504. Isabella, a Catholic, was queen of Castile and Leon. She and her husband, Ferdinand of Aragon, brought stability to the kingdom and became the, the basis for unification of Spain. Isabella and Ferdinand are known as a completing their, what's the, reconstitution? Whatever. Ordering conversion of exile to the Muslim and Jewish subjects of finance in Christopher Columbus 1494 that led to the opening of the New World. Isabella was granted this. So, what did she do that was bad? I don't know. That was weird. Um, the uh, oh, what was it called in Spain? Because they, they forced all the people who had converted to Muslim and Judaism. They. Uh, tortured until they came out to be Catholics or oh, died, wow. whichever came first. Mm. Uh, the Angel of Death. There's a lot of English serial killers. Beverly Gale Alitz is the English serial killer, one of the ten most evil women. She was convicted of murdering her four children. Damn! Attempted to murder three other children and causing grievous Bodily harm to further to a further six children. Damn, bitch. Woo. Lord. The crimes were committed over a period of 59 days between February and April of 1991. And the children's ward of Grant Grantham and oh, she was in the hospital where Lit was employed as a state enrolled n- a nurse, folks. A nurse. She administered large doses of insulin to at least two victims in a large air bubble was found in the body of another. Police were unable to establish how the, all the attacks were carried out. May in 1993, always May. They got to fuck up my birdie more. Nottingham Crown Court, she received 13 life sentences for the crimes. Mr. Justice Latham sentenced to a lead that she was a serious danger to others and was likely ever be considered safe enough to be released. You think? She is detained at Rampart... Rampart Secure hospital in uh, Nottinghamshire. Oh, uh, what did Queen Mary of England do? She's innocent. No, she was a massive killer. She was a mass killer. She has a very, very... I mean, she's the reason why I say Mother Mary. Not Mother Mary, Bloody Mary. Uh, the whole Bloody Mary thing was her. Really? Yeah. Yes. May 1st, born in 18 February 15. 16 and died November 17, 1558. She was the Queen of England and Ireland from July 1553 until her death. A brutal prosecution of Protestants caused her opponents to give her this. Oh, yeah. Bloody Mary. Oh, okay. I never knew that. Learn something new every day. She was the only surviving child of the ill fated marriage of Henry the, the Eighth. Eight. Yeah. And his wife, Catherine of uh, Aragon. Mary is mm-hmm. remembered for a temporarily and violently returning England to uh, Catholicism. Many it was uh, if you if you look up the Tudors, um, it, it's, all, it's all the stories told in there. Very very interesting, uh, very interesting story. Well, history. Many prominent uh, Protestants were uh, executed for their beliefs, mm-hmm. leading to the moniker "Bloody Mary." Fear the gallows of a further eight hundred Protestants left the country, unable to return to her death. Oh, this hoe look crazy. Bellas Gunners. Bell Gunners. Standing six feet tall. Woo! She's a big bitch. That's a huge bitch. Weighing over 91 kilograms. A physical strong woman. Bell Gunners was one of America's most degenerate and productive female serial killers. She was an opposing and powerful woman of Norwegian descent. Them Norwegians are some big bitches. Some big dudes, period. It's likely that she killed both her husbands and all her children at different times. But it is certain that she murdered most of her suitors, boyfriends of her two. Why was these men get with this big hoe? 
God damn. And two daughters, Berto and Lucy. The motive was greed, pure and simple. Life insurance policies, assets, assets stolen or swindled from her. Suitors became her source of income. God damn. Most reports put her to death toll at more than 20 victims over several decades. What year was this bitch? I gotta look her. It'd be up. like twenties or thirties. So all them, all them mid, missing dead kids. Ain't nobody ever wondered what the fuck was going her going on. Most reports for the death of twenty victims over decades, with some claiming in excess of one hundred. How the hell? That's a hell of a leap. Twenty to a hundred. Inconsistencies during her post mortem act. Ac- Examinations. The course was reported to be two inches shorter than Bell's six feet, paved the way for Bell Gunners to enter American criminal folklore. A female blue beard. So they think she was a man? Or that's what they call female uh, serial killers. I thought they called them black widows. Well, she would have been. Bluebeard was a pirate. But I heard that name before dealing with serial killers. So Bluebeard was a pirate? Yeah. Hmm. Marianne Cotton. Britain's first serial killer. Marianne, damn, she was the first one. Born in 1832. Little Morsley, Dornham County. Count them, Duke County, Dornham. Married at age 20 to William uh, Mulberry. <laughs> The newlyweds settled in Plymouth, Devon, to start a family. The couple had five children, four of them who died in gastric fever and stomach pains. The kids were just dying back then of anything, bro. We can just make another one. That's That was the oh. model back then. Yeah, Bluebeard also killed all his wives. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So. Mm. God damn, Bluebeard. Moving back to the northeast, tragedy seemed to follow them. Three more children born, three more children. T- That's not funny. William soon followed his, his offspring, dying of an intestinal disorder. She killed everybody. 1865, British uh, prudentially uh, promptly paid a 35 pound dividend, and, and the pattern was established. Her second husband, George Ward, died of intestinal problems. She was just knocking off everybody, as well as one of her two remaining children. The power of the press, always a force to be reckoned with, caught up with Marianne. The local newspaper discovered that as Marianne moved around in northern England, she lost three husbands, a lover, a friend, her mother, and a dozen children, all dying of stomach fever. She was hanged up Dory County Gal on March 24, 1873 for murder by arsenic poisoning. She died slowly, the hangman using too short of a rope for a clean execution. Yo, I could not live in those days. Hey, everything went. Everything was everything went. How are you hanging somebody but the rope ain't long enough? This storm is crazy. It looked like it's nighttime out here and it's 12 o'clock. Born on September 22nd, 1906. Elsie Couch and on a die Hixie von Butchwin. Yo, the Germans got some hell of a names. The bitch of the Butchwell <laughs> was the wife of Carl Otto Koch. She was one of the first prominent Nazis to be tried by the U.S. military. Drunk on absolute power, she rendered rendered by her husband. She revealed in torture and obscenity infamous for her. So, so souvenirs, tattoos taken from the murder inmates. Her reputation for debauchery was well earned. After building an indoor sports arena in 1940 with 250,000 marks stolen from inmates, Lisa was promoted to whatever the fuck it is, chief overseer, one of the few female guards in Bunch World. She committed suicide by hanging herself at uh, Archive Women Prisoners in 1967. Oh, this one, she looked real crazy. This right up your alley, uh, Mayo. This is a Friday thing. Hey, what the hell are you talking about, Kai? I told you I was doing this. I'm giving all y'all women smoke. Catherine Knight. 
born on October 24th. Hey, I got to end this shit soon. That shit about to knock out everything. Uh, and continues to serve lifelong sentences in prison. Uh, Catherine was the first Australian woman to sentence for life or imprisonment while parole. Well, wasn't Australia where they sent all the criminals to? Britain. Yes. Yeah. She had a history of violence and relationships. She blasted the dentures of one of her ex-husbands and slashed the throat of another <laughs> another husband, eight-week-old puppy before his eyes. God damn. God damn. God damn. What is this bitch name? I gotta write her down. Holy Cat- oh. Catherine Mary Knight. Yo, this a cold bitch. Hey, the thing about the, the, the thing about it is everyone that's named Mary has always been crazy, except for Mother Mary. That's the only one. Damn. Look on look look on the history of the name Mary. It's a lot of crazy bitches named Mary. A lot of them. A heated relationship with John Claus Thomas Prince Price became public knowledge uh, with the apprehended violence order that Price had filed against Knight and ended with Knight stabbing Price to death with a butcher's knife. He had been stabbed at least 37 times, both front and back, with many of the wounds penetrating vital organs. She it's then worse. Sca- oh, Jesus. She then skinned him and hung his suit from the door frame in the living room, cut off his head, put it in a soup pot, baked his buttocks, prepared prepared gravy and vegetables to accompany the roast. The meal and <laughs> vindictive note were set out for the children, luckily discovered by the police before they arrived home. I, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. And there's one worse than this. Uh, Elizabeth Bathory. Born in 1560, dying in 1614. She didn't even live that long. Countess Elizabeth Bathory uh, was countess from the renowned Bathory family of nobility in the kingdom of Hungary. She has been labeled the most prolific female serial killer in history, although the number of murders debated and a member of the Blood Countess. Also, she was infamous serial killer in Hungary. She used to kill the peasant girls, those se- severe beatings, burners, mutilation of body parts, chewing off the face, etc. Oh, God. She was on house arrest and was not put to trial because of her status. Wow. That's crazy. They just put her on house arrest. So she got away with that shit. They locked that bitch up in the castle tower. They should have threw her off. That's crazy. That I wonder if they just crazy. fed her peasant girls once a week. I'm still tripping off the, the chick that ch- chopped her boyfriend's head off and put, and put it in the pot and made some gravy oh, out of his and, ass. And skinned him. Whew. And then cooked his butt mm. as a roast. As a, mm. with vegetables and gravy with a meal for her children. Mm. Wow. Mm. We always say we want a woman that cook. Now we got one and complain about you. it. Now we got one and complain. <laughs> now we got now we got one and complain about it. We always say we want a woman that cook. She cooked and cleaned. She cleaned him and cooked and cooked them. <laughs> God damn, we always, you know, men can't make up their minds what they want. But uh, I'm about to end it. This storm is getting bad. I'm pretty sure everything about to shut down anyway. So hopefully I can go on tonight. Hopefully it passed through. But this shit is crazy. It, yo, it looked like London, England out there. It is dark. You can't even see nothing. Now I'm going to have bad dreams about these serial killers. I got to have to end this series. This was a bad idea for me. I shouldn't have did this. I said this is the wrong idea. I might end, I might end up taking this back. Oh, I got the uh I do that for the night, nigga. All right. The ten hottest female killers. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that tonight for my uh for my uh, live show. 
Yeah, I do that tonight. All right, so you scared of females? Yes, sir. That's a fact. Okay. Yeah, my shit about to cut off. I'm about to end the show, y'all. So we'll see y'all later on tonight. I set up a thumbnail for it, and uh, hopefully we'll get to go on. I might do the female hottest criminals ever. Mail just sent it to me, so we might be surprised. So I'll see y'all later. I'm out. Bye-bye. <laughs>